If your app is slow or not responsive, most users are just going to leave immediately. And unfortunately, many React apps are slow and sluggish, but the use transition hook is specifically meant to speed up applications and make them feel responsive to users even if there's a lot going on. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're gonna to be talking all about the use transition hook. Now, first I wanna talk about when it's going to be useful before I show you how to use it because it's really important to know when you should use it and when you shouldn't use it. So let's look at the simple React application we have. We have two pieces of state. We have an input, which is just our text input right down here that's on the right-hand side of our screen. We also have a list variable, which has a default size of 20,000 elements. And every single time we change our input, which is on this on change down here, what we're going to do is we're going to set that input value variable so it'll show up in our input. And then we're going to loop through essentially 20,000 times and we're going to add an element to our list with that exact same value. So essentially what this is emulating is a list that has a lot of data inside of it. So you have an application that has a lot of data or you have like a really time intensive computation that goes on and it's maybe happening really often because you have some state changes based on inputs that are tied to it. For example, clicking a button and running some complex task in the background. Well, right now, if we run this application and I try to type information on the right, you're gonna notice it's very sluggish. At this moment right now, I pressed the F key and you can see it took a long time for that to show up on the screen. Again, I'm gonna press the D key and you can see there was like a second pause before it actually rendered onto the screen and showed up on my list. And if I was just trying to type, like right now I'm just typing random stuff, you can see that it's not showing up at all on the screen and it's taking a huge amount of time for it to show up. I mean, it's still not on the screen and I typed out a bunch of information. So this is clearly a very slow and sluggish application and we need to fix that problem. Now, in order to actually fix this issue, we need to first understand what is going on. So the way React works is when you make a state change, for example, I call set input or I call set list, what it's going to do is it's going to try to combine together all the different state changes we make into one call, and then it's going to make them all at once before re-rendering our application. So in our example, it's going to combine together our set input and our set list. And because our set list takes so long, because it has to go through this massive for loop and add a bunch of elements to the for loop and then render out all those elements to the screen, rendering out the change for my set input and my set list is very slow. Instead, what I would like to do is make it so that the set input has a higher priority. It runs ahead of time, and then my set list, which is slow, is going to run at a later time because it has a much lower priority that we don't care as much about. That's what use transition allows us to do. It allows us to make two different state changes at the same time and rank them in order of how important we want them to be, whether we want it to be a high priority item, such as user interface stuff, like setting the value in the input when the user types, or if it should be low priority, such as just setting this list value, which is not as important as the input being rendered out exactly as the user types. So let's import that hook and see exactly how it works. We have our use transition hook. And also with the use transition hook, there's this start transition function that you can use. If you're in like a class component, for example, you would use this start transition function. But if you're in a functional component where you can use hooks, then you wanna use use transition. And this use transition is, when we call it, going to give us an array of values back. So we can just say use transition. And this array of variables has two different values inside of it. The first value we're gonna get back is is pending. This is going to be true or false, depending on if the data is currently being rendered. And then we have that start transition function. This is the same function that we get if we import start transition up here. But if you are again have the access to hooks, use the use transition hook because you also get this is pending variable as well. So by telling React to start a transition, you're essentially saying all of the state inside your transition is going to be low priority. By default, all of our state changes in React are high priority and they all run one after the other until they're all finished and then it's going to render out to the screen. So it's going to render set input, do all that data, then it's going to do all the set list data and then finally once it computes both of them, it's going to render them to the screen because they're both by default high priority. What we want to do is we want to wrap all this information for our list inside of a transition that says, hey, this is a low priority piece of information. And we wanna only render it out if we have time. We wanna make sure that this input though renders out immediately. So to use start transition, we just call this and we pass it a function. And inside this function, we just do our variables, you know, our setting of our state. So we're doing our set list inside of here and all this computation up here. So by doing just this one simple change, I've told React, all of this code is low priority. This state does not matter as much, but this state right here is high priority. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire off events where both of these state inputs start to get worked on. And as soon as my high priority stuff is done, which in my case is this input, it's going to render to the screen that data. Then a little bit later, when the lower priority stuff is done, for example, setting my list, then the list will show up on the screen. 
So let me save this and show you what this looks like. If I type in D right now, you can see the D shows up immediately inside of my input. And then the list itself renders out a little bit later because it's delayed because it's inside this lower priority transition. Now, if I type in a few different characters, I'm going to start right now. You can see that they're all typing out just fine. And then the list itself is rendering out at a later point when it actually can. The key important thing to understand about this start transition and use transition hook is that you're essentially just setting the priority. High priority stuff is going to run at the same time as the low priority stuff. But as soon as all of the high priority stuff is done doing all of its computation for the state, it's going to render out to the page whatever is going on. And then the low priority stuff will work in the background while all of the high priority stuff, such as my input, is still accessible. So all of my normal interactions are still accessible. And even if my low priority stuff is still being worked on in the background, it won't matter. It'll still take precedence where it's like, hey, someone typed into the input, stop working on this low priority stuff and instead immediately work on this input, which is, you know, setting the value right here. So by doing a start transition, you just give it a really low priority where React's like, I'll work on this when nothing else is going on. And eventually when the data is ready, I'll re-render the page for you. And with this end is pending property right here, we can use that down here by saying like, hey, if this is pending, we're just going to render out the text loading just like this. Otherwise, we're going to render out our list. And now if we just refresh our application over here and I start typing, you're going to see it just says the text loading over on the side of the screen. And then once it's done, all of my text shows up, start typing again. You can see it says loading and then the rest of the list populates in. So depending on how you want this to work, you can use this is pending to really show different loading states and so on. Now, there is one important thing to understand about this use transition hook is it should be something that you only use when you absolutely need it. Because like I said, by using use transition, you're making your app do more renders than normal. When we didn't have this transition right here, we just had our code like this, our application only rendered to the page once when we changed our input because it did both the input and the list render at the exact same time. While when we did our transition like this, our application did two separate renders, one when our input changed and one where our list changed. So if you wrap everything inside of their own individual start transitions, now your application is going to be doing a ton of re-renders when in reality, if they're small changes that can all happen at once, it would be much better to let them all happen at the exact same time to limit the number of times your application actually needs to re-render. I would recommend only using this hook for use transition when you're specifically running into performance related issues where you have code that is slowing down your application or has the potential to slow down your application. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love my completely free React Hooks course. It's going to be linked down in the description below. It covers every single React hook that you need to know, and it's 100% free, which is absolutely amazing. No ads, nothing like that. So if you're interested, that's going to be linked down in the description for you. Now, with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.